each and every one according to their needs, Lord God. Father, I pray for those church members, friends, relatives who couldn't come today, Lord God. I pray that you would bless them too, Lord God. Any sickness, illness they are going through, Father, any need, Father God, I pray that you would provide. Thank you, Lord God, for people who are working today, Lord God. I pray that you will release them to be in church on, 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 the, on this day, Lord God. And I pray, Father God, that you will make a way, Father God, where there seems to be no way for them, Lord Jesus. Thank you and praise you today. Speak through me, Lord God. Use my mouth. Use my tongue, Lord yes. God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How is everyone today? Good. Paul? Yes. <laughs> Good? Wonderful. Wonderful. We're going to uh, read a little paragraph from the Bible. You know, when I, when I share, when I come in front and share uh, from the Word of God, I like to pick on individuals who we don't often speak about. I like to pick those characters from the Bible which we sometimes have forgotten, sometimes we don't want to talk about them because uh, there might be some discouraging message from their lives. And today I want to look at the life of uh, the father of John the Baptist. What was his name? Zachariah. Yeah, Zachariah starts with Zach. <laughs> Zach is sleeping right now. Yes, so we are going to read uh, uh, from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 5. To 25 but I'm not going to read the whole thing actually you don't have to read you just look at the thing and I'm going to read the birth of John the Baptist foretold in the time of Herod king of Judea there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah his wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron so you have to remember that Zechariah was a priest from birth, okay? In those days, whoever was born in a priest family, the child, when he was born, also automatically becomes a priest, okay? Whether he wants to serve the Lord or he doesn't want to serve the Lord, but because he's born in a <coughs> family, he is automatically called a priest. So Zechariah was uh, from a priestly family, so he was born a priest. Also, Elizabeth was a descendant of Aaron. So both of them had uh, been born in uh, the, the families of priests. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. You have to pay attention to this in the verse 6. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. They, they tried their best to follow the commandments of the Lord, okay, and live a righteous life. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old, okay? Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by Lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshippers were praying outside. When Zechariah... Sorry. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink. You know, when um, you will find this in many people's lives. When God chose certain people to serve him, it was said about them, 
that they are never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he was born. You remember when Mary visited her cousin Elizabeth, what happened to John the Baptist? He leaped in his mother's womb because he was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit even before he was born. Amen? Amen. And the scriptures uh, are telling you something that is going to happen or has happened. And John the Baptist was already filled with the Holy Spirit. And John the Baptist was sent for a purpose in this world. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. I'm not going to read further, but you can keep the scriptures ready. So we are going to talk about the priest named Zechariah. His wife was called Elizabeth. They finally gave birth to a baby boy called John, who uh, Jesus got baptized from. Okay? I'm sure everybody knows the story. Now, during the time, a little bit of Bible study notes, during the time of Zechariah's priesthood, there were about 20,000 priests serving with Zechariah. Okay? Now, anyone born a boy, a male in the family, as I said, automatically... Um, uh, got the name of a priest. They automatically became priests because that is how the custom was during that time. Now, because there were so many priests, around 20,000, they give us the number, okay? Everybody didn't get a chance to serve at one time. Everybody couldn't serve. Like if, if we had, say example, we had say 20,000 church members, Matthew probably would get a chance to preach probably once in a year because of the number of preachers in the church or the number of church members in the church. In the same way, during the time of Zechariah, because the number of priests was so high, um, Zechariah was given a chance to serve once in a lifetime, and that was to offer incense to the Lord. Anybody has uh, uh, put incense in, in coals? Anyone here? Most of us go yes, once we do that. No. Yes. And how much baat kare? Sorry. How much baat kare? Zechariah, ek jo ad priest tha, padri tha. Uh, Bible mein uski bibi thi uska naam tha Elizabeth aur hum aaj baat kar rahe jo Zechariah jo uh, jo priest tha uske bare mein uske la jeevan ke bare mein hum thoda sa aaj study karenge okay so Zechariah gets a chance to burn incense in the temple now this is a lifetime opportunity that Zechariah gets, okay? Um, now when, when he has given, been given this opportunity, they have been taken lots. You know what lot? Chittis. Yeah? Chitti dal ke uska naam aata hai. Aur Zechariah ko us wo time pe dhup, incense is dhup, right? Yes. धूप जलाने का परमेश्वर के सामने मंदिर में मंदिर के अंदर जो भाग है वहाँ धूप जलाने का उसका मौका मिलता है यस एंड व्हेन जेकरिया इज प्रेजेंटेड टू गो इनटू द टेंपल ओके नाउ दिस 
this is a very special moment for Zechariah. And I don't know what has been going in Zechariah's mind, what he has been praying. You know, if, if it was one of us to go into this temple and to burn incense, just think in your mind, what would you have thought or what would you have prayed on that day? Because this is a lifetime opportunity that you're getting. What could have been your prayer that day? What could have been that special petition that you would put before the Lord? Yes, that you have been given this opportunity to go and offer incense to the Lord. सोचो एंड आई डोंट नो वॉट जैकराय प्रेड दैट डे बट वेन द एंजल ऑफ द लॉर्ड अपियर्ड to Zechariah. What was the name of the angel? Gabriel. Gabriel. Who else did this angel appear to? Mary. Mary, yes. And you know, the angel of the Lord appeared to, Ma uh, to Zechariah that day in the temple when he, it was time for him to offer incense to the Lord. And the angel says to Zechariah, because Zechariah got scared because he was meant to be by himself there and then he and he sees this angel standing next to him and the angel probably looked probably had wings and dressed in white you know it's it probably is amazing to see an angel uh, you might uh, you might have not imagined we saw in pictures what angels look like but you never know because the pictures don't tell us the whole story you never know what jesus looked like you never know what uh, mary looked like we just see in the pictures and we believe that you know jesus probably had blue eyes which he didn't probably had long hair probably not you know so things like this so there was this angel who stood before zechariah that day it is a very precious holy moment yes and zechariah जैकराया डर जाता है कि ये देवदूत उसके सामने जो खड़ा है उसको देख के जैकराया डर जाता है और वेन द एंजल लुक्स एट जैकराया एंड नोज एट जैकराया इज फिल्ड विथ फियर ही सेज डू नॉट बी अ फ्रेंड ही सेट द सेम टू मैरी राइट डू नॉट बी अ फ्रेंड and then he tells zechariah okay that you your he says first your prayer has been answered i wonder on that day on that day whether zechariah had even prayed for a child i doubt it I also doubt what he must have prayed that day. Was was he praying for the nation of Israel? Was he praying for for a child because he was quite old and uh, his wife was old probably. You know they had accepted the fact of course when they were young when they were married they must have prayed for a child okay because in those days if you were married and if you didn't give birth to a child the woman used to be called cursed and and uh, different uh, things would be said to the woman and the uh, and the man was even legally uh, allowed to divorce okay this is what happened in olden days that when you didn't bear a child to the husband that you were married to you were considered a cursed woman okay so i have been thinking that probably in their old age they must have even forgotten that they wanted a child they must have even forgotten that they had prayed 
that they wanted children. And they went on in their life accepting the fact that they will have no child. Okay? Now, when, when in the beginning I read that Zechariah and Elizabeth were very good people. They obeyed the commands of the Lord. Okay? And it also says that God considered them as righteous. Now, when God considers somebody righteous, it doesn't mean that those people are without sin. What it means is that these people try their best not to commit sin. They try their best to remain faithful to the Lord. If you look at the life of David, David, God called David as a man after his own heart. But David was a murderer. David was a rapist. Yes? But God still called him a man after his own heart. Why? Because David came to the Lord. He bent down before the Lord. He was humble before the Lord. And he confessed his sin. And he said, God, forgive me. If this is what you have brought into my life. I ask you forgiveness. Change my life. I'm sorry for what I have done. This is what God wants to see in your life and my life. We are not perfect. Even as pastors of the church, myself and my husband, we are not perfect. My son is not perfect. My daughter is not perfect. You can expect them to make mistakes. You can expect them to do wrong things. But the more you come before the Lord in repentance and say to the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done, but I want to live my life for you. I want to commit my life to you and I want to live an upright life, a righteous life. This is what God is pleased with. And this is what Zechariah and Elizabeth, uh, God saw them as righteous people. Okay? They were not only upright in their own eyes, they were also upright in the sight of God. And you have to read the scriptures uh, uh, when you go home and study a little bit. You know, it helps you and me to live a good life. That how much we try our best, God doesn't give up on us. He is with us and he continuously blesses us. Yes? Amen. 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 God is a good God. Amen. Amen. And, and then we read further that this is the time that, that Zechariah is offering incense to the Lord. I remember when uh, Zeph and Trisha were born in Goa. I'm sure Lynn also probably did the same thing. You know, we used to burn coals. When we Goa, in India, when my children were born in Goa, then हर रोज जब वो उनको मसाज मिलता था उनको नहलाते थे और नहाने के बाद हम वो उनको वो धूप जलाते थे आपके भाषा में उसको क्या कहते हैं आपको पता है जो बच्चों को वो धुआं वो कोयले पे वो ये डालते हैं ना धूप टैंक ओके सो एनीवे so we we used to do this. I don't know, Zuzan, uh, we do that because of cold, so that the children will not get cold. And there are other reasons as well. So I remember Zeph and Trisha, I still have pictures of them, you know, of burning incense. But this is a very spiritual moment for Zechariah. He's burning incense into the temple of the Lord. And a very intimate moment for him. Now, I also want to look at the other side of the story where Zechariah and Elizabeth have no children. They have not been blessed with a child. They are childless. I also want you to think about what a couple goes through when they don't have a child. Okay? Now, being born in India, and growing up in India, if 
you see a couple who is not having a child, you think of many things. You think of things like, oh, तेरे किने तोरी पात का केले आस्तेली मुड़न तेरे का बुरी है ना? Oh, we think, oh, तेरे जो माय पाजे कर्स तेरे जो वो रे इला मुड़न तेरे जो गारा ना तब बुरी ही ना. You know different things. People think about why you have no children, and I'm sure Elizabeth and Zechariah went through the same problems. He was serving as a priest. You know, people probably might have said, you know, Zechariah and Elizabeth, they're serving in the temple of the Lord. Look, they don't have a child. Probably doing something wrong. They're not serving the Lord properly. They're not doing it wholeheartedly. Or they're just doing it for namesake. That is why they don't have a child. You know, people's judgment can come in your life in different ways. But when you look at their lives, when they get old, God not only blesses them with John the Baptist, or just a normal child, but God blesses them with a child with a purpose. Amen? Amen. A child with a purpose, a child who was going to prepare the way for the Lord, for the Messiah, was going to prepare the hearts of people, the nation of Israel, to receive their Messiah. That is what they were going to be blessed with. Yes, amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, let me just go back to my notes. I don't want to miss out on anything that I have uh, noted down. Um, now, being big, uh, when, when you have children in your family, you are considered as very good people, okay? Because children are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a gift from the Lord. And it was considered that if you don't have a child, that you are you are cursed in the community. Okay? Now, Zechariah and Elizabeth were well advanced in years. There was no way that in the normal thinking that they could have a child. Okay? But this experience was a unique experience for Zechariah. Now, what happens in that temple when Zechariah is offering incense? <coughs> Not only the angel comes and talks to him and says that you're going to have a child. And Zechariah questions the angel. Okay, he says, Zechariah has a question to ask. Zechariah asks the angel, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words which will come true at their appointed time. <coughs> Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah. Now see what happens. Zechariah has a question. To ask to the angel. Zechariah, Jo Devdu message leke aya, Jo Sandesha leke aya, ki aap ek bache ka baap banne wala hai, aur ye bacha jo hai, wo Yeshu Masi ka rasta, rasta banane ke liya beja gaya hai. Zechariah uh, Devdu ko ek prashna puchta hai, ki ye kaisa possible hai? मैं बुढ़ा हूँ मेरी बीबी बुढ़ी है और हम बच्चे पैदा कैसे कर सकते हैं The next thing that happens is Zechariah is not able to speak. He his mouth just shuts. There is nothing that comes out of his mouth. He after that he finishes his worship. He finishes. Uh, burning incense to the Lord and when a priest comes out of the temple after burning incense he's he's meant to give the benediction you know 
He's meant to bless the people because the people wait for this uh, privilege and opportunity to be blessed by the priest who has gone and burned incense to the Lord. And Zechariah comes out and he can't speak. He cannot bless the people. Why? Because he doubted. And God probably didn't want Zechariah to speak anything more doubtful further. Okay? So, so from that day onwards, Zechariah was dumb. He couldn't speak a word. He, he couldn't communicate anything through his voice. And everybody probably got shocked when he came out. He acha kasa andar gaya tha, aur ye gunga ban ke bahar a gaya. Aur sab sab ko ascharya ho gaya hoga. Lekin ek baat hume pavitra vachan batata hai ki jab wo andar se bahar aya, uske chhere pe ek alag hi glow tha. Ek alag hi uska chhera dikra tha. When he the Bible mentions that when he came out from uh, uh, burning incense to the Lord. He came out and there was a different glow on his face. Okay? And the time came for Elizabeth to bear the child, be pregnant, nine months. Zechariah couldn't speak a word. He couldn't communicate. Probably even uh, Elizabeth wanted to know um, what happened in the temple. He couldn't explain his experience about the angel's visit. He couldn't share to people who had many questions. When, uh, when Elizabeth gets pregnant in the old age, there, there could have been many questions asked. How come Elizabeth is pregnant at this age? Zechariah wouldn't be able to speak and explain what has happened. He couldn't tell the people that the angel visited he couldn't do anything about it. It's quite, it's quite surprising that, that you know, when God wants to give you a miracle and you are not able to talk about that miracle to anybody. And in this case, we see that Zechariah probably went through this situation because God didn't want Zechariah to doubt any further. Amen? Amen. 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 And now... It's time for the baby to be born. And the baby is born. John the Baptist is born. And then, should we... Now, now let's just read uh, 24. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. And this is how God blessed Elizabeth. Okay, now when it was time for John the Baptist to be born. John the Baptist was born. Okay. And when he was born, it was time for John the Baptist to get his name. And everybody was questioning, what will the child's name be? And at that time, Zechariah writes John. And he communicates through writing that his child will be called John. And at that moment, his mouth is loose to speak. And, and, and God sets him free from that bondage of being dumb. Because he obeyed the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Things like this happen in our lives as well. Many times we come to places like this. We're waiting for a miracle. We're not getting this miracle. And then God gives it to us, okay? And we're not able to handle it. But it's God's grace that, you know, God gives these things to us. There are many prayers that sometimes we ourselves forget what we have prayed. Both bar aisa hota hai ki jo Prathana hum prabhu se karte hai. Wo hum khud bhul jate hai ki humne prabhu se kya manga hai. But there are some prayers that we remember, right? 
There are some prayers that we don't forget and we are after God again and again, again and again, again and again. And God has never forgotten what we have prayed. God always remembers what we pray. Okay? If you remember in the life of uh, Mother Mary, yes, when the angel Gabriel came to visit her and gave her the same news that she was going to be the mother of Jesus, what did Mary say? Did Mary, uh, did Mary uh, fear? Did she show any fear? Was she scared when she saw angel Gabriel? We don't know. Probably she did. She was quite surprised to see the angel. And when the angel said that, you know, this is, this is what is going to happen and Jesus is going to be born, he will be the Messiah. She said, let your will be done. Amen? She said, let your will be done. There is a little bit of difference between Zechariah and Mary over here. Zechariah showed fear. Okay, and Mary showed assurance. Okay, Zechariah showed doubt and Mary trusted in the Lord. She said, let your will be done. As you have desired, let it be done. Okay, um, and because of the consequences of his doubt, he was striked and couldn't speak. Okay, now it's a great story to, to listen to, right? When we, when we read stories from the Bible, we read about David, we read, read about Goliath, we read about <coughs> Moses, we read about Abraham. These are very nice stories to read about. But there are always lessons to learn from every story. Hum jab Moses ke baare mein padte hai, Abraham ke baare mein padte hai, uh, David ke baare mein padte hai, toh bhoot achcha lagta hai jab hum story padte hai na. Lekin ye jo bhi hum padte hai, uh, jo vachan se padte hai, us mein ek uh, uh, hume sikhna hai, kuch toh hume sikhna hai ye padke. Ye aise hi padke hume bhool nahi jana hai. Har ek हर एक के जीवन से हमें कुछ सीखना है एंड इन दिस स्टोरी एज वेल वी हैव टू लर्न समथिंग फ्रॉम द लाइफ ऑफ ज़ेखरायाह ज़ेखरायाह ट्राइड टू लिव हिज लाइफ प्लीजिंग टू द लॉर्ड ही ओबेड गॉड्स कमांडमेंट्स ही ही लिव्ड इन अ प्राइड लाइफ एंड येट ही वाज नॉट ब्लेस्ड विद अ चाइल्ड ही पीपल जज्ड हिम फॉर not having a child for his wife. They probably called her different names for not bearing a child. We have to remember, and if, if you look at his life at the end, he was even blessed more. Same, same thing with Job. You know, when Job walked on this earth, he went through a difficult time. God allowed Satan for Job to be tested because God really trusted in Job, that Job is not going to fall before the devil. And the devil challenged uh, God and said, let me try your servant Job. And God said, okay, I'll give you permission. God gave the devil permission to try and test Job. And Job, everything was taken away from Job. His wife, his children, his house, his property, everything, even even his body was filled with wounds. He was, he was in a total disgrace. But Job still trusted in the Lord. And what happened in the end? The end result was Job was blessed much more than what he had before. His blessings were much more than what he had before. Okay? In the same way with Zechariah and Elizabeth, their lives seemed very dull. Even though he was serving in the house of the Lord, you know, this is a lesson for me and my husband to learn when we are serving in the house of the Lord. You know, things in, in, in our family might not be perfect. Things in our uh, lives might not be perfect. 
yes but we try our best to give to god uh, uh what we we feel is is good and we try to obey the word of the lord as much as we can and we try to give our best to the lord and there are sometimes things that that we ourselves you know uh, miss a little bit here and there and we ask god questions god have i made a mistake have i done something wrong and god wants to assure us today that you know it's not like that it's not how people judge you it's not how you see your situation but it's how i see it's how it's what i want to do in your life you know and and the way god sees it not the way people judge you don't worry about people judging you they will come with different things because they have they have a, a mouth that god has given them they will come with different things to judge you forget about that you consider what god wants and what god thinks about you what is your communion with the lord aapka rishta aapke prabhu ke sath kaisa hai what is your relationship with your god are you are you in communion with the lord are you waking up in the morning and are you worshiping the lord are you pray is is god the first thing you wake up in the morning what is it about what do you think about the first thing when you wake up in the morning is it god is it your father in heaven are you thinking about your god amen amen you know trials and difficulties will come Elizabeth and Zechariah probably thought that God had forgotten them even though they were in full time service to the Lord they probably thought they were the Isolas to God anka burge dium na devan devan so gras kori na dista and it was the it, you know they were old so they had probably thought about all these things and they had even forgotten about being blessed with the child okay that is what it probably felt like but that is not what really happened isn't it yes god the truth is god was preparing them all this while god was preparing them for a greater blessing okay now all of us know that god doesn't delay yes does he delay no. does god delay but we know that god's timing is perfect right and yes. god does not delay and i believe that in zechariah and elizabeth's life god did not delay but his timing was perfect now it's something to wonder about why only elizabeth why only zechariah why not somebody else why god didn't choose young people to give birth to john the baptist because god had a plan and you know when god plans something for your life it has to happen when god commissions something to happen through your life no matter who you are no matter what you do no matter how much you have studied it doesn't matter but god will bring that to pass through your life so it doesn't matter elizabeth zechariah she joseph mary you know and what we see is god chooses people who will be obedient to him who might not be too educated who might have not been to bible college now zechariah was born in a priest family so he automatically got the position of priest probably he didn't go to a bible college or didn't study but he through his ancestors he 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 got this position and you know many of us who are serving the lord today we have not been to bible colleges we have not got a reverend degrees but god is looking at people who are willing to serve and many of us have been in service and god is pleased with people like that who are willing to serve him who are willing to go out of their way to to love one another to give you know to give a nice hot cup of coffee to a homeless person who uh, is sitting by the roadside you know that 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 the stirring inside you to just bless somebody who doesn't have what you have is such a blessing and only god can put this desire inside of you 
that love that you have for your neighbor, the love that you have for one another. It's only God who can put the, that desire in you. And this desire comes only <coughs> when you obey the word of God. Amen. Amen. And when you are close to, to your God. Okay? Otherwise, it will be judging. It will be uh, selfishness. It will be jealousy all the time. And doing the wrong things all the time. And falling into sin all the time. When you enjoy the closeness of the Lord, you will automatically, uh, your character will automatically become like the character of God. Amen? And God, for your information, is not looking for perfect people. Because your Heavenly Father knows that you cannot be perfect. Okay? He is looking for people who are willing. He is looking for people who will be obedient. Prabhu, Prabhu, jab hume chunta hai, hume, hume, humare taraf dekhta hai, wo ye nahi sochta hai ki aapka jeevan ek dam achcha hai, isliye main aapse pyaar karunga. <coughs> Prabhu aisa nahi sochta hai. Prabhu, jo aadmi aurat Prabhu ke karib ana chata hai, usse Prabhu khush rehta hai. Usse Prabhu, uh, usko Prabhu aur bless, aashish, aashish se bharta hai. Okay? God wants to awaken us all today. Let's look at the life of Zechariah and Elizabeth. Okay? These are not simple people in the Bible. These are people who have experienced miracles in their life. And that is why we get to read about them. Every, every name, every character in the Bible has a purpose to be there. Okay? Every name, every character written in the word of God has a purpose, okay? And we need to learn lessons from each and everyone's lives. There are so many things we can learn from Zechariah's life, so many things we can learn from Elizabeth's life, okay? To understand the purpose of God, not to rush into things, not to depend on our own understanding. You know, it says in, um, in Proverbs, uh, chapter 3 verse 5 it says trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding it doesn't matter what you understand from the word of God how you interpret God's word okay and it says trust in the Lord trust in the Lord without any doubt okay and he will give you the desires of your heart now, the desires of your heart, that is also a question mark. When you say you, you desire for something, and I tell everybody who is very close to me that if you ask for something that is going to be harmful, God is not going to give it to you. But if something is good for you and you desire it, God is not going to keep that away from you. Amen? You all believe that? It says in Jeremiah... Uh, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Okay? I was born in a family in Goa. Um, we were not very rich. My, my father was a, a UDC in the Mapsa Municipal Council. He had a good post. He was in the taxation department. And life was very good when I was born. Uh, we had everything we needed. But at, at the age of eight, my father started drinking very heavily. He became a chronic alcoholic and everything messed up for us. And if I look at that time today, and um, if I had not to meet the Lord at the age of 13, you know, we were singing that song if, if uh, I, I, I don't know where I could have been. Remember that song we sang? You know? Don't know what would have happened to me today. You know, I could have gone through different things in my life. And uh, could have been a messed up life. But we had a strong mother. 
a mother who had faith when i was a, when i was 12 years old she gave her life to the lord she gave up everything to follow the lord she didn't bother about who said what about her there were people who persecuted us they were not friends with us children were not allowed to play with us we were treated as um, untouchables because we had uh, we had accepted the lord we had become born again but we my mother stood that faith and she continued because she, because she knew that she was following the truth she had met with the truth and the truth was jesus christ and we continued you know everything was not filled with roses as soon as we accepted the lord we still had to go through the trials and testings and different things but today if i look back i look back at the choices that i have made and i praise the lord that he has brought me through you know he has brought me through he has brought my family through My brother is a pastor in a church in Westminster. My other brother is a deacon in another church and we are all serving the Lord. And life life has not been easy, but it has been good because God has been good to us. Amen. We have gone through a period of very difficult times, you know. Um when I when I put food in the bin sometimes, I feel very bad. I think twice when I put food in the bin because of the times that we went through struggles because I saw difficult days and only when you experience those times when you go through something that is the time you are you learn to be grateful amen yeah very good and and through these years I think God was preparing me preparing my family to receive a bigger blessing you know and today i have been blessed i remember my mother was so strict with us when it came to following what the rules are if we did something wrong she would run behind us she she had a back problem she she had fallen down and she had um, she had you know arms would tell it in her back neck and she always had a problem in her life with her back but any time we we made a mistake she would she would just take the stick and she would run after us not bothering about her health you know but we never we, she, she could never find us because you know we were filled with energy and i remember the time i had taken 5 rupees from her savings and she had found out about the 5 rupees and the 5 rupees i had taken was to buy dairy milk chocolate because i love dairy milk chocolates and they were costing 5 rupees at that time i was in my secondary school and i remember what she did to me when she found out that i had stolen this 5 rupees from her she put me out of the house we had a very small house and she put me out of the house and she said you're not coming in till you repent and you regret what you have done knowing that you will never do this again and i cried <laughs> and uh, my brother came to me my brother terry he tried to say to me you know say mommy is telling you something good so you need to you need to learn and things like that <coughs> and i entered the house with a promise to my mother saying i will never steal again and i remember that promise that i made to her <laughs> because that was something that was very close to my heart and you know god teaches <coughs> us through his word to live a life that is pleasing to him many trials and tribulations will come you know you might have gone through something in your life <coughs> something in your life that that i cannot compare with your life you might have gone through something different probably a very bad childhood you know even though my father father was a drunkard he never touched me he never hit me never ever not even once did he touch me but you could 
you could have gone through a different experience. You don't know what. You know, some of you sitting over here, you probably came from a family where parents abused you. They, they beat you up for no reason. They removed their anger. They probably had problems in their relationships and they beat you up for no reason. You probably hate your father today. You probably don't love your mother today. But you know, God has a purpose for your life. God has a reason to bring you here today because he cares for you. He has a purpose. This, the, 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 the purpose that Jeremiah talks about in chapter 29, the plans that he has for your life are good. Do not say to your God, God, why are you doing this to me today? Why have you brought me to this place? And what are you doing with my life? God is not a cruel God. God is a loving father. If you have not experienced a loving father in your life, you are here today to experience the love of God. If you have missed out on anything in your life, anything that you feel that God has not given you, give it in his hands because he is going to turn that into a blessing in your life. There is something better. There is something more wonderful than what you have intended for your life. God will never harm you. God doesn't intend to bring harm on you. God doesn't play games with you. He wants to bless you. He wants to fill you with his peace. You know, some of us have husbands who don't care about us. I have a loving husband who, who, who loved me the most. He gave, gave up everything for me. And uh, when he preaches, you know, uh, his love just comes out and he, he tells everybody about his love, you know. But it's not that everything is perfect in our lives. We do have arguments. We do have uh, misunderstandings. But one thing we know, that you know, we will stick to one another no matter what. Yes? You know, as a family, we make a commitment to one another. We, we, we exchange promises to one another. And we do things obeying the word of the Lord. Amen? God is never going to leave you. And your difficult time, God is going to use it for his purpose. The, the, the time that you go through trials. Today, today I can stand anywhere in Goa and give my testimony because of what the Lord has done in my life. I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel because I stood my grounds and I went through what I went through. Nobody, nobody came. Nobody said, you know, this is, this is 100 rupees. Use it for food. Nobody came except our relatives. Nobody came and there was one lovely lady who was our neighbor. She would give us a lot of things and I am still grateful to her even though she's not alive, but I still remember her. Nobody comes to help, but God is always with us and he will never leave us nor forsake us. You know, if you are going through a difficult time today, if you have something to ये याद रखना कि प्रभु आपको कभी नहीं छोड़ेगा आपके तकलीफ में वो आपको रखेगा नहीं क्योंकि वो उसका प्रॉमिस नहीं है वो उसका आशीष नहीं है उसका आशीष ये है कि जो भी आपकी तकलीफ है उसमें से आपको निकालना दैट इज व्हाट ही डिड विद ज़ेकरिया एंड एलिजाबेथ यू नो द थिंग्स दैट दे वेंट थ्रू इन देयर लाइफ्स फॉर नॉट हैविंग अ चाइल्ड इन देयर लाइफ्स God bless them even with a greater blessing, not only with a child, but a child with a purpose. A child who would prepare the way for the Messiah. That is what, that is what God has called us to be. Just not living, living a life, just not a normal life, but living a life with a greater purpose. You know, to, to, to be an extraordinary not just be a normal human being, but to do something extraordinary. You know, whatever, whatever your weakness is, God is going to use that same weakness for his purpose. 
And that weakness is going to turn into a blessing, just like Moses. Moses couldn't speak. Moses would stammer. Okay? He couldn't speak to God. He couldn't, he, he, he was not meant to be a leader, but God made him a leader. He had to speak in front of thousands and millions of people. He had to lead his people into the promised land. He led, he led the, the, the Hebrews to, to leave the nation of Egypt into the promised land. God gave him the strength because he obeyed. It is important to obey the Lord. You know, you don't have to sit with your Bible 24-7. You don't have to sit with your Bible and say, and nothing is going here and here. Yes, but the main thing God wants you to do is to know what is written in the word and to obey him. Prabhu aisa nahi sochta hai ki hum apna pavitra vachan khol ke din bar aise padte rahe. Nahi, wo uski ichcha nahi hai. Lekin uski ichcha ye hai ki ye jo vachan humne एक घंटा अगर हमने पढ़ा और वही वचन हमारे जीवन में हमने किया वो वचन के जो वचन हम पढ़ते हैं उसके बारे में हमने अपना जीवन गुजारा वो प्रभु को बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है उसका उसका महत्व बहुत प्रभु के सामने बहुत है He wants us to to obey him He wants us to to just be connected to him and to to remember him in our trials, to remember him in our difficulties. And there is a day that everything will end. Zechariah <coughs> and Elizabeth's barrenness came to an end. She was a barren woman. She was a cursed woman, but it came to an end in the end. It had to come to an end because God intended it. Because it says in Jeremiah, you know, people were in difficulties at that time. And to receive a promise, you know, when somebody is going through difficulties and you say this scripture to them, if they don't accept it and if they are not touched by the scripture, it, it feels like, what are you talking about? You know, I'm going through this sickness. I have cancer. I have a big tumor in my body. I have cancer. And you're telling me that God has a plan for you? But this is what it is. This is the word of God. Amen. And God has a plan for you. Yes. Doesn't matter how big the tumor is in your stomach or doesn't matter how big the tumor is in your head. God has a plan for you. Amen. And nobody can cancel the promise of God over your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the plans to prosper. Just not a plan for you to enjoy your life and finish, die and go in the grave. No. There's a plan to prosper you. Yes? And not to harm you. God will not bring harm on you. Plans to give you hope and a future. A good hope. A good future. Okay? Not a harmful one. God doesn't bring harm on his children. You have to cling on to this promise. You have to trust in him. You have to obey and you have to rely upon your God because he really cares. I have experienced this in my life. You know, I could have been a messed up child. I could have been uh, gone through abuse in my life. I could have been gone through so many things, but God protected me. You know, at the peak of my teenage years, you know, teenagers can be really messed up in their lives if you don't guide them properly. That's the time where, where most of the wrong things are done because you have hot blood in you. And you can, uh, all of us have gone through that period of being 13 and 19 and you know the things that you have done in your life. You know, and I met God at the age of 13 when I just became 13. And I thank God so much that he protected me. And today, you know, God has blessed uh, my family and I so much that I, I have so many things to be grateful to God. And I am sure God has the same plans and purposes for you, different from mine, to bless you and to prosper you and to bring hope in you and a good future and uh, give, give you the gifts that you have never dreamt about because the, the gifts that God has for you are uncomparable to sometimes even what we desire. 
Amen. Amen. Even the children that are sitting over here, God has good things for you. Don't settle for something small. You know, hope for something big and God is going to give it to you because he, he loves you and he has a purpose for Manda, Abigail, for these two children here, for Zach. God has mighty things, big things planned for you. So don't settle for little, little things because that is not what God wants in your life. He wants big, greater, mightier things for you like he did for Zechariah and Elizabeth. He gave them somebody in their lives to prepare the way of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Bless you. Well, praise the Lord. Let's close your eyes. Aag ban karte aur respond karte to Mr. Kofi. When Mr. Jabbi baat karta hai, when God speaks, it's our responsibility to respond quickly, not to delay. But if you find that any line of trinda in her preaching, any scripture, any anything that God touched you, koi baat aapko permission ne sparsh ki hai, touch ki hai. So respond kijiye. Respond kijiye. Aaj bhi agar aapko lagta hai ki aapke liye jo chamatkar hona chahiye tha. Like Zakharaya. If you feel that your miracles, your prayer answer has not come. And you've been still waiting. Maybe because of doubt. Maybe because of unbelief. Maybe... अविश्वास हो सकता है कोई भी चीज हो सकती है लेकिन आज हो सकता है हम हम ये प्रार्थना करें लेट्स प्रे टुडे दैट गॉड आई वोंट डाउट यू मैं तुझ पे संशय नहीं करूंगा आई वोंट डाउट यू फॉर अविश्वास मैं नहीं रखूंगी मेरे अंदर तू जिंदा है तू परमेश्वर है यू आर अ गॉड यू आर अ लिविंग वन एंड आई बिलीव इन यू आई बिलीव इन यू फॉर you have a good time you have a right time aapke paas acha samay hai mera samay hai parmeshwar aur jab mera samay aayega mujhe zarur milega amen when my time will come i will be blessed i will receive all my answers i will see miracle amen so what do we say today then to the lord kya hum bolenge aaj phir to parmeshwar we wait upon you god we wait on you lord jesus we wait for your right time we wait for your perfect time we wait for your plan to be fulfilled we wait for your purpose the good purpose the good plan you have for me to prosper and you have a good future you have a good future for me god good days are ahead of me so i will wait so i will wait so i will mai raah dekhunga permission lekin raah dekhte dekhte mai kabhi samshay nahi lunga aur vishwas nahi dikha as i wait i will not have unbelief lord jesus but i believe in you god i believe in you lord jesus hallelujah i believe in you god thank you father 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 thank you father, thank you, father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Do you want to speak to your your later days today and then the days to come? Say, God, my future is good. You have a plan for my life, Jesus. I'm not going to be a drug addict. I'm not going to be a drunkard. I'm not going to be a smoker. I'm not going to be a liar. I'm not going to be an angry person. I'm not going to be a hurt. I'm not going to be a lonely person. I'm not going to be without the church. I'm not going to be without my Bible. I'm not going to be a person who who is who is who is, who is living in trouble all the time. I'm not going to be a person who all the time finds himself, myself, and others in trouble, 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 trouble. But I'm going to be a blessed one. Come on, I'm going to be a blessed person. I'm going to find peace. I'm going to find joy. I'm not going to be insulted. I'm not going to be put down by people, by my family. But I'm going to be respected by my family, by my house, by my neighbors. <coughs> because you have a good future for me. You've got a good plan for me, Father. You've got a good plan for me, God. That people that spoke against me, about me, wrong, or any other stuff, 
Lord Jesus, like Zachariah, like Elizabeth, people would see John born in my life. People would see miracle. People would see change in my life. People would see, see, see peace and joy into my life. People would see the big plan of God fulfilled into my life. People would turn and respect me. You would build up a God that respect. And that, 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 that respect in the eyes of the man. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. We give you glory and honor to your name. Do you want to pray any other prayer? As the presence of God is still over here. As the Spirit of God moves. Just say, God, I won't do anything wrong. I won't lie. I won't steal. I won't smoke. I won't take drives. I won't do anything wrong. I won't lie. I won't take drives. I won't smoke. I won't take drives. I won't do anything I won't do anything, Father, from today. But I will obey you. But I will do the right things, Father. No matter how big the temptations are. No matter how big. I won't commit sin, Lord. I will not commit sin. Come on, come on, come on. Just say to God. Just promise God. Just pray. Just say, God, I won't touch those sinful things. Those wrong things from today. I want to live a good life. I want to live a proper life. I'm not going to do anything wrong, Lord. Jesus, hallelujah. I commit my life to you. I commit myself to you, Father. I commit myself to you, Father. You have forgiven me today, God. I won't commit that sin again. I will not fall into that sin again, Lord. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. May the Lord bless you, answer you, give you all your prayer answers and miracles. And may you have a faith and not doubt. May you see John born into your heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Shalom, shalom, and shalom. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.